Hey guys, so in today's video, I'm going to show you how we can use Power Automate to dynamically set an option set field in CDS based on some input variables. So this is a follow on video from my last video and blog, which were about using little flick buttons like this to create records in CDS. In that previous flow that I created, when I created the record, I set an option set field called office based on my office location. Um, but that a value in the option set field was hard coded into the flow. So that meant for each of my four offices, I needed to have an individual flick button like this. So four buttons and four individual flows to set those. As you can imagine, that's not ideal. And if you had more offices, that would become a bit cumbersome and a bit hard to manage. So what I wanted to do was create a single flick, a single flow that I could trigger with one flick button and then use some variables and some dynamic um, data to see which one I'm closest to at the time that I click the button and then create the record based on that. So what I'll show you today is, is how we can use that flick button to do that, how we can use some arrays and iterate through each of the options. When I do that, what I'm going to be using is the Bing Maps get root action. So before you start this, you should sign up for a Bing Maps API key. If you don't have one already, I'll pop a link in the description below so you can see the instructions on how to do that. It doesn't take very long and it's free to do. So that's great. And I'll walk you through the flow. So the first step is the trigger, which is my when a flick is pressed trigger. I've just picked my flick button and I'm using the click event. Next, I'm going to use a format date time expression in a compose action to take the click time that I get from the flick button and make that into something that's just, just a bit nicer to look at, a bit more human readable, because I'll use that in the title of my evacuation record. Next, I'm going to initialize an array variable. If you're not familiar with arrays, then the easiest way to think about them is as a set of related data elements. And so I'm actually composing an array in the next step. So you could think about it, I guess, a little bit like a table. So what you'll notice here is for each of these array elements, I've got an office address an option set value repeated four times. So think of those as your table headers and then the data against each of those in the array elements. Think of that as rows in your table. So I've got four rows against three columns or three headers. And so for what I'm doing here is I've got the office name or city, so Glasgow, Edinburgh, Birmingham, London. I've got the street addresses for each of those offices. And then I've got the option set value. And I get the option set value directly from the office option set in CDS. You can see the value here. So we just copy that and paste it into our array here, making sure to take out those commas that, that appear in the list. So now that we've got that, I'm going to use a parse JSON action to take each of those elements and make them usable when I go to my next step. And the, the schema that I have here, I've pasted into my blog and I'll link the blog in the description below. And I'm going to use an apply to each action. Um, and so I'll take the output, the body of the parse JSON step. I'm going to use the Bing Maps get root action. And so you can see that here, the two required elements are waypoint one and waypoint two. So for waypoint one, I'm going to use the latitude and longitude that are returned from the flick button. The flick button is Bluetoothed to your phone and then it takes the latitude and longitude from your, from your phone and passes that through to flow. So it's really handy. Waypoint two, I'm going to set to the office address that I specified above. And then I'm going to set it to optimize distance. I'm going to set my distance unit to mile because I'm in the UK and that's what we use. And I'm going to set the travel mode to driving. And then the output of this, I'm going to create an array element and append that into that offices array that I initialized up above. So I'm going to create the office again, think about office option set value and distance as columns. I'm going to set the office to that office value, the option set value to the related option set value, and then distance to that travel distance that's returned from the get root action. And you can see there's quite a lot of information that you can get returned from the get root action. So there's quite a lot of interesting things that you can do with this. But for the purposes of this demo, I'm really only interested in the travel distance. Once I've got that, I'm going to initialize an integer variable called successful actions and make sure that I set that to zero. And I'll use that in the next loop and action that I do. I'm going to use another parse JSON um, action 
for that offices variable. And again, that schema that I have here is on my website. And then I'll use another apply to each action to the output of that parse JSON step that I've just done above. So within this loop, what I'm gonna do first is check if I'm close enough to the office. So because I've got a distance now, what I can say is, am I within a certain distance of the office? So you can see here, I've said, set that distance is less than six. I'm using that just so I can show it in action because I'm currently at home and I'm about five and a bit miles away from my closest office. But obviously in a real world scenario, you'd say, you know, are you within half a mile or half a kilometer of the office or whatever is appropriate for you for, for when you're setting it. If I am close enough to the office, I'm gonna create an evacuation record. I'm gonna set my title and then I'm gonna use that output um, from the format date time expression above. The office value, if we just clear this a second, what you can see is normally you would have your four options or however many options you can pick, but you can also enter a custom value. And I'm just setting that to the option set value. And then I'm setting my start time to the click time from, from the flick button trigger. And then I'm gonna increment that successful actions by one. So if I'm close enough to the office, create a record and then increment successful actions by one. Once that's complete, I'll then just go to the final step, and that is to say, is successful actions equal to zero? Because if it is, then I'm probably too far from any office, and therefore I just want to send me more notification to let me know that. If it's not, do nothing and carry on. And so what I'll do is I'll click my button. We'll see that it'll run in just a second, which usually takes about six or seven seconds to run, and we'll see it's now run successfully. And so what I can see is when the flick is pressed, there's a couple of bits of data that come out of it. So the, the type of, so that'll be a click, a double click or a hold, that click time. And again, like you can see, it's not super readable, not super friendly. And that's why I've used that format date time expression. But importantly, I'm getting that longitude and latitude information. I've then formatted the date time. And you can see that's just a bit nicer to look at. It's a bit more common, or it's the kind of expression I would more commonly see and then I've initialized that array, parsed the information, and so for each office, what I'm doing here in the get route is seeing the distance. So if I look at the travel distance, you can see here, I'm currently just over 49 miles away from Glasgow. I am just over five miles away from the Edinburgh office. I am just over 280 miles away from the Birmingham office. And I'm just over 365 miles away from the London office. So that's great, and then we've cre created that array element and appended that to the offices array variable. And then we've parsed that, so when we go to the next step, it's gonna say, am I close enough to the office? So for Glasgow, I'm too far away, so just ignore that and carry on. But for Edinburgh, I am close, so it's gonna create an evacuation record. And if I look here, what we can see is, I've created that record, and if I open it up, that option set va value has been set to Edinburgh. So that's a really quick demo to show you how you could use this information, but obviously there's loads of different ways you could think about using this and, and using those dynamic triggers that you put in. So while it is possible to do something similar to this using nested if functions or using a, a switch function, I think this is just a little bit neater using those arrays. It's it's less cumbersome to, to manage and, and to keep up to date. So I think it's really useful. Hopefully you find it useful too. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it and what you think you could do with it. You can contact me um, on Twitter or on LinkedIn or email me using the information that you'll see scrolling along below or go onto my website, ryanmclean365.com to read a bit more about it. Until next time, cheers.